Hello everyone. Today we're going to get started on drawing the friction plate. I'm going to show you how to draw all the angles and all the circles that go into this little guy. So first thing we're going to do, start with a new AutoCAD document. You're going to use the ACAD, regular AutoCAD. We're going to start with some circles. So the friction plate has a number of different circles in it. We have a two inch diameter circle here in the center. We have a four and three quarter inch diameter circle that goes where these little circles go around the outside edge. And then we have a big six inch diameter circle. So we're going to start by drawing those three circles. And because we're using diameter circles, we want to go click under and go to the center diameter tool. We're going to start with a two inch diameter circle. Then we can hit the uh, circle tool again up here. Start from the center of that one. We're going to come out and draw the four and three quarter inch circle. <clears throat> and then we're going to draw another circle that is the six inch diameter circle. So now that we have all three of those, we're actually just going to concentrate on one quarter of this drawing to start with. We're going to take that one quarter and then we're going to array it around to make these four quadrants. But for what for right now, we're just going to concentrate on one of these little corners. Now, what I want to do to start that is to just draw a line up this way and then draw another line up this way to just section off that little quarter section here. If you wanted to at this point, you can type trim, hit enter twice, and you can trim away all the extra stuff that we don't need. So we're just going to look at one quarter of the drawing right now. <clears throat> we're going to draw the line tools, and we're going to start drawing these angles up here. And it says we have a 15 degree angle down to this part, which means that because it doesn't say anything different, it's going to be a total of 30 degrees, so that means that we have 15 degrees up to get to this line here. We have 30 degrees in between these two circles, and we have 30 degrees in between these, uh, the vertical line and this circle over here. So we're going to draw a bunch of 15 and 30 degree angles. Now there's two ways that you could do this. One is that you can actually start by drawing a line, bring it up here. We never want to trust just the angle that the mouse is telling us. We always want to input our own angle. <clears throat> so there's two ways that you could do that. One is that we can actually just type the less than character, which is right above the space bar on the right hand side. If you type less than and then type 15 degrees, if I hit enter, it's going to angle override so that no matter what, I can only draw a 15 degree angle. And at that point, I could then hit uh, click on the mouse, and I would have my 15 degree angle right there. That's one way to do it. And if you have specific angles like 26 degrees or 32 degrees, that's a very good way to do it. The other way that I can do this, I'm going to undo that line, is coming down here to the polar tracking. If I click on that down drop down box, Right now, my polar tracking is set to 90, 180, 270, and 360, which means that when, my, when I start drawing a line, it only locks into those 90-degree angles. If I wanted it to lock into every 15 degrees, I can come down here and then click on the 15, 30, 45, 60, and for every 15-degree angle, the mouse will sort of lock into that angle and be on the polar uh, degrees of 15, then 30, then 45, then 60, so on and so on. <clears throat> that really helps us out for this drawing specifically because now I only have to come up to 15 degrees and lock in a line right there. I'm going to hit the space bar. I'm going to click another line off of 90 and come this way, 15 degrees, which is 75 degrees total because remember that zero starts from here and goes out this way. That's zero degrees. This is 90 degrees. This is 180 degrees. So because I have those two lines now, that's this line right here and this line right here, I can actually come in and trim those little bits away. I don't need this extra line here. I don't need that extra line here. And I also don't need this part or this part 
And now you can start to see this thing taking shape. So I don't need this line in here or that line right there. And I also, I'm going to leave this here for now, but I'm not going to need those guys. And I'm not going to be able to trim this line because now it's its own little line segment. So I'm going to hit escape and then I'm going to click on both of these guys and hit delete on that. Next thing I'm going to do is draw some circles in here. So it shows me that my circles are 30 degrees off of 90 to go this way and then another 30 degrees over this way. So again, because my line tool is already snapping into that, 90 degrees is here, that's 75. 60 degrees is where I'm looking for, so I'm going to draw a line right there. And then I'm going to hit spacebar and draw another line 30 degrees less than that, which is at 30 degrees here. And I can just draw it right there. I'm going to draw two small circles. And over here it says that this is a half inch drill, eight holes, which means that each each eight of these holes are all the same. <clears throat> a half inch drill size means that it's a half inch diameter, because if it was an actual drill bit, it would be a half inch diameter. So again, I can take the circle diameter, the center diameter tool here, drag this out, put 0.5 as my size, and hit that size right there. Now I can either copy this or just draw another circle over here at 0.5 diameter. There you go. Now these lines I can get rid of now too. So I can hit the trim tool. I can trim these little guys all out of here. I don't need any of them. And now because these lines are separate, I can just delete those lines. <coughs> Now I have almost all of the outside done. I have all of this stuff done. I just have to repeat that pattern. But before I repeat that pattern, I'm going to come in here and draw the inside part of this. So now I'm going to uh, focus on this center part here. And because it says that this is on a 45 degree angle, see how on the left side of the drawing here, it has a 45 degree angle tipping over to the center of this line. I'm going to show you just how to do this. I'm just going to set up at a 45 degree angle and I'm going to draw my line a little bit longer than where I need it to go. I'm going to click that line up there. Now that's just to get me where I need to go on the 45 degree angle. Now I need to draw this little thing called a keyway which is you can see one quarter of an inch tall on the outside edge and a half an inch wide across here. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to come back to my drawing. I'm going to start with my line tool. Because we're still locking in at 45 degree angles and, and 15 degree angles every 15 degrees, I can just draw my line up this way. And I'm going to go half of that half inch and go 0.25, one quarter of an inch. And then I'm going to come, come down at a 90 degree angle, 0.25. And I have half of that drawn. Now again, there could be a whole bunch of different ways to do this. I could just redraw this over here and come down this way. But I'm going to show you a new tool, the mirror tool. And it says, first off, select objects. So I'm going to select the two lines that I want to mirror. Hit enter. Now it says specify the first point of the mirror line, which would be this point right up here. That's the center line of where I want to mirror it over to the other side. Click that first point and then draw a line down to this way to click on the mirror line that way. And then the last thing is, it says, do you want to erase the source objects? Yes or no. In this case, I don't want to because I want this to be duplicated over to there. So I'll click no. And now I have all four of those lines all in the right spot. The last part of this to drag this down is to click all four pieces select them, and then I'm going to move them all in one group. And when I click move, I want to click from a base point, specify the base point. So I'm going to click this as my base point, and then I'm just going to transfer that down by extension until we hit the circle. Once I hit the circle, now I know that this side of the line is still a quarter of an inch, and this is still a half an inch. I can show you that with the measure tool here. If I click from there to there, that's still a half an inch. And this is still a quarter of an inch. Now I just need to trim out this stuff in the middle. 
So I'm going to click this and delete it. I'm going to hit the trim, hit enter twice, I'm going to delete that. Now I have my whole thing all set up. I got the outside edge, I got the inside corners. Now I just have to select this entire thing. So I'll just click a big green box around everything. I'll go up to the array and go down to polar array. And it says specify the center point of the array, which would be the center point here. And then clearly this is wrong because I have six. So I'm going to change the number of items down from six to four. Hit enter, bring my mouse down. And now I have all four of these parts in there. But we have too many lines here in the middle. These lines were there for, for us to see where the quarter was. So I'm going to hit escape. And remember that because this is all an array now, I can't edit this piece right as it is. So what I have to do first is type the word explode. E-X-P-L-O-D-E. -E. Explode. And I'm going to select this whole thing to explode. Hit enter. Now I have separate drawing lines where I can delete these lines. There's multiple lines there because it arrayed over top of it. And once you have that, you now have all the pieces all put together to make your friction plate.